Majora's Mask. Back. Yeah. Uh, this should have been, like, last Thursday, or two Thursdays, I don't even know. Two Mondays ago? Whatever. I think it was a Thursday. Anyway, I was sick, so I didn't feel like recording this. But here we are. So, let's do this thing. So, we finally went back in time. Well, started the cycle over again. And so now we got things to do. Well, technically. I mean, since we can just keep going through the cycle over and over again, technically we've got all the time in the world. In a confined set three days, but all the time in the world. So, as an obvious game mechanic, by cycling through time, you keep all your key items like the ocarina or any ma and and blah, 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 and any masks you find but you lose um, you lose the other items like bombs arrows any of those things things that can easily be replenished oh and you also lose your rupees but let's go get a lot of rupees when you start the cycle over again even though you lose all those replenishable items Anywhere where you could easily get those in a treasure chest will be replenished. So every time you start a cycle, it is always a good idea to go to this 100 rupee chest up here. Because it's very easy to get to, as long as you're Human Link. Which is cool. But we need these 100 rupees. We need these 100 rupees. We need these 100 rupees to go do a thing. As this is one of the first of many collection episodes. As I, well, at least think at the time of recording that, I go, that I'm doing 100%. We're gonna have to get every single heart piece, and since there's only really four dungeons in this game, there are a lot of heart pieces. And the first one's here at the sword um, Swordsman School, or whatever it's called. So yeah. There is a novice course and the expert course, and the expert course is the way to get the heart piece. All you have to do is get 30 points. Each sword slash you do is a different point value, the highest being 3. So that is the jump slash. And as you can see, I sort of failed the first time. It being only 10 rupees to actually do the game, and me now having 20 less than 100, well, 99. And that's because the jump slash is sort of finicky in this game, as you can see. Well, it sort of homes in on, in like, Wind Waker and after. In this one, Link just goes forward. And I mean, it sort of homes in, but, like, I almost always miss the first shot, as you can see. So in this game, you just basically just want to keep jump slashing. It's not hard. It's just sort of finicky. But whatever. Yep, that's the heart piece. So we never have to come back here again. And let's actually get outside. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to correct something I said in... I think I said in one of the videos. The banker doesn't actually, like, traverse time. I guess it's like he stamps you with the amount of rupees in your bank. Or whatever it is. So that's how he knows how many rupees you have. So you sort of exploit the banker in a way by... Keep putting rupees in and then going through time. And yeah... It's the cool way to climb up the stairs, but you can go up those platforms over there. But that's lame, so... And this is another really easy heart pace that you can get as Human Link. But yeah, we get to extort the bank. It's great. Anyway... These moving bushes will come in... to actual effect much later. Uh, we have to go deal with these bombers again. They have a certain notebook that we want. But we can't really knock down the balloon right now as Human Link, as we have no projectile weapons, so back to the bubble it is. And that kid is unfazed by us screaming and putting on a mask and suddenly becoming a different race. 
Which I guess, I, I don't know, maybe it happens all the time in Termina. It's weird, it's a backwards country. And those are the two animations for this mask. That second animation is shared with all the transforma- like, super transformation masks, but... The first time you put on a super transformation mask, like a race mask, you, uh, always have that screaming cutscene. That's forced. After that, you can always skip it, but the first time you put it on, you'll always see it. And since they're all hiding in the exact same place, I'm just gonna speed that up. And of course, we need the obligatory, uh, heavy metal version of the town theme. I mean, I couldn't, couldn't think of a Zelda video without it, so... Oh, I got stuck. Anyway, last kid's over here for some reason. A lot faster than the first time I did it, let me tell you. Yeah, and since we're actually human this time, we can be a bomber. But the Skull Kid gets kicked out. The Bomber's Notebook is interesting, because anytime you meet a person who can give you a mask, it'll tell you where they will be and when you can actually get the mask, as long as you meet that person first. And there's 20 people, 20 masks, yep. And it's not just in Clock Town, it's all over the world. So yeah, that's a, it's a good way to keep track of where masks are, who can give you masks, and when you can actually get them. If you're not using a guide like I am. I mean, I've gotten all the masks before, but I haven't gotten all the heart pieces, and it's less a guide and more just a checklist. So yeah, I'm not really using a guide, it's more a checklist, but whatever! And we got the notebook, and the same code again. So yeah, if you don't really care about the notebook, you can just sort of skip getting the... And you just want the code, you can just sort of skip that. But there's something not really necessary, as I can explain it, but it's better to show off everything. So yeah, let's just slowly put the code back in, because I forget it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, he's just saying all the same things, I'm just not actually watching the screen. And yeah, you could probably tell that's a cut, but... Because there's so much in between. So if we talk to this, uh, Scarecrow, you know how he dances and time moves forward. Well, after we danced with him for a bit, he will tell us the secrets of his magic. But first, we need Saria's song. This was entertaining as hell as a kid, I, I'm not entirely sure why. Well, anyway... Uh, no, that, that's fine, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, that's why I came. Okay. So what he is talking about here is the Song of Time. If we play it backwards, time slows down by like half or a third or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. It might be a f like three-fourths or whatever. I don't know. It's a fraction, all right. But... Yeah, it slows down time. And if we play each note twice... It actually speeds up time in the same in the same type of effect that the scarecrow has, in which it goes to the next six hour, um, twelve hour point. So six or six, it, six a.m., six p.m. It goes to the next one, whichever one's next. But yeah, and now that we are human and have a sword, we can actually leave Clock Town without that glitch, which we can still use that glitch, and whatever. But yeah, and there's one, I think, hmm. There's one last thing that I need to do, I believe. And that is, and that is actually an event that happens at midnight, so I gotta waste some time. There's a little thing that I want to show off down here that uh, isn't really important, but we gotta take care of these enemies so they don't annoy me while I'm trying. Um, every day there's a new, like, 
I don't know, staff, I guess? Some music on that wall? And if you actually play them, you get a prize. Now you just have to... You can memorize the music, but it's so it's such random notes that it's easier just to try to get it in the background while you play. And it's rupees, and I don't know if you do it every day, you get progressively more rupees, because I know you can get like... Or maybe it's just random, I don't know. But yeah, if you need to waste some time and you need some cash, yeah. It's a good place to go, just to try it out. I don't think I've... That was maybe the first time I ever did it. Maybe the second, I don't know. But, needless to say, I never really ever do it. And there's an interesting man back here. I see. Okay, so, after wasting more time, here we are. There's an old lady with a bag. Now, if we just watch her... We'll see the event unfold. <laughs> yep, so now we just have to hit this guy with a sword. This thief. Which is... It's pretty easy, I and mean, I usually hit him around that tree, but I just kept missing tonight. I don't even know why. But, there we go. Now this event is interesting because certain other events will or won't happen depending on if you save this lady. So, sometimes if you save the lady, an event won't happen, but if you save her, sometimes it requires an event to happen. It requires you to save this lady to make an event happen, to get more masks or harpies or whatever. So yeah. You'll be doing this multiple times th through the game if you're going for 100%. Which, I mean, that's why it's easy and stuff, I guess. Alrighty, so we got the our first real mask. The bomb mask, which is basically an unlimited bomb with a recharge time. And we'll deal with that in the next part. See you then.